some man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace. Jesus, I the center of it all. Jesus, I the center of it all. From the beginning to the end, it will always be, has always been. Oh, 
Through your precious blood, I found pardon. Now my sins are washed away. Washed away.
Let's sing it. I was bruised, but Jesus healed me. Faith was I from many a foe. Sight was gone and fears possessed me, but He freed me from them all. Yes, I
walk in this pilgrim way. Oh, I'm safe and secure. Come on, talk to God. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God. Communicate your faith. It's effectual. It's effectual. It's effectual. As you acknowledge every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. Reza mago zago tala para de goze broro bosa. Reko sere para de gazora para do. Reko mando go si pata la gara para de. Come on, communicate your faith. 
Maso Barale, say I'm more than a conqueror. By Christ which strengthens me. Say I am healed by God. I was healed by his stripes. He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. Oh, the chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes I was healed. Reko Samando Sheketele Padaraba. Roko se badago satala paradiga. Reko se patala parade. You confess it and say, for this cause he was more poor that might become rich. Renga tola paradega zokatala pararabarade. Sobogo shika patala. We know the grace of the Lord Jesus. We know the grace of the Lord Jesus. That is why we cannot struggle. That is why we cannot strive. Mekato bazo bagata. Roko seketele parade. Zemando go shika pararaba. Rego seketele pararaba. Seketele pororobogosa. Rema so pakarabara taraba. Reko sele mando go zigata. Shepo kore reba go sekete. Reko sarala Zorobogo shika tara parade. Zore mando go shika tara pa. Zoroborogo shika tala marade go zerebo. Rogo sara parade go shandala parade. Zorobogo shika tara parade go zerebo. Reko sherele bo ziraba go sekete. Zororobo zigaraba. Zerebo zoko zoroborobo. Zerebo ko shika nanaraba. Rose mando go shika tada barade go seke tele poro toko boro do zere mango seke tele paradega roko serere bo shara la la ba rosa pato kasa katala pa roko se mara tere bara bara te maro boko ziga bara te poro do reko serere mara ndego si paradego zo paradego seke tele parado asande go sehe ke tele pa serere boko robo ko saka tala parada ba roko seke tele paradego sabata la pa. Remando zika barade ha soka ya payale moko ye polo dogo zere pa soko tele parade gazo marando sobogo shika tala parade sobogo shika tala parade go soro bobo bo zika tala pa soko rema shonda na barade ga soro bobo sila marato kose pata soko rema shata la pakaraba zere boko sheke rere bo zere ma soko tolo porodo zere bo zeke tele parato zeko parande go ze boroto Ma shoro boko zigara pa, soko mara he seke telebo, sere ko zikara la 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 ba, soko remando ko seke re re bo, he sere re bara la la ba ko seke re te, ma ro boko topo ko tolo poko tolo, me topo ko lo dogo zoko boroto, me shara la 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 re bo seke re re bo, ro ko shara la 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 ba re re bo, ye zoko boko tolo boro re re bo, sere mo ko zikara la 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 ba, he tele mara ne ko seke re boro do. Ma songa ko shakata, e shakata la paratela ba. Soboro dogo shikara ba. Sere koko riba gaso, ere kasa palateka. The Bible says it's a small thing for you, for the prince of this world has nothing in you. He has nothing in us. Mareko zala barego shekete, mako para kotambode. What we have in this treasure, in earthen vessels, that the excellence of power might be of God. Maroko zara mando go shikata la ba. Seke tele poro do boko zogoro po me seka tala para de gasogoto e ya baga zogoro boro do go sako ramando go sika tala para raba e saka para de boko sala raba zoro bo sika rala raba zoro bo sika rala bara la gosa e rika shoka tala para de bo reko se boro do bo se ne ke seke te ma shoko ro ro bo se reba hato e shara baba e reko sala rala ba reko samatola para te. Masho madega zoka tolopa, roko seke re boro lobo, seke re re boko zigara pa, reko seke tele para dega zo, eriga zoka tala mara te katala, shoko bara dega zoko re reko seka pa, reko seke le moro dega zira bara do, zego sila mando ho seke te, maso prate dega zoko ro boro to, eriko seke tele para dega zoko to, eshe madega seke re boro dega zo, eriko seka tala para dega zo, reko seka tala mara dega zoko ro po. Maso kashaka pakata, zere kashaka tala para de gazo, zere kashaka tala para le kaso, zere kaso kota la marando, zeko tele para de gosegete, eye koseke tele mara de gosegere pa, zeke re 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 bo koseke re re bo, masha kata la mara de gasonda, maso prata gazo koboro do gozo koto, zere kashaka tala mara de gaz, zere kose para de gasonda gose. Ma shokama, shoko prata go seke de parado, shoko ropo ko tele parade, seke seke, mato loko, metele kete, mato koyabade, 
Sobolo logosa, ese que se le para de go, mas son bajo sacata, se le para lo go si cararaba, recosere de nuevo se le cata, se le lo goro boco soco tolo borodo, recase que se le para de gaso, ese que se le para lo lobo, recata pa pa para de gaso, ese balaco sacata la pa, soco para de gaso golo boto, mas so pa calabara de ga, o recaso pa boco, me saca pa tele capo, besele que se le conde, soco se le para te capo, soco para Ya que zangota, ese que te le para lega, o samba de caso copata, recasa para de gozala, recose le para de goze, racose te le para cose, mato con por do gozo, recase que se que te le pa, rocose que le para do gozo, recose que te le por do go, recase le goze que te le pa, socorro bobo bobo se que te le pa, socorro bobo bobo do lo bozo, recose que te le para de goze, rocose que te le para da gozo. Mas socorro no lobo go segrete, socorro por no lobo go segrete, mas socorro tala para de, socorro se que te le para no go, recose que le por no lobo sa, mas saca tala para de, ha socorro topoco, mas socorro para de ga, socorro tala para te ca, co soro lobo zo, reca saca na na para de, soro bobo go segrete bo, si cara na 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 ba go segrete, socorro no lobo segrete bo, recose que le para de, soro bobo si cata, saca na na ba go segrete. Roko se kere rebo, rako se le bara de goze, shende ke se kere bara, roko sapata la kote, o shamba de ga sopata, zonga tala para te kapa, roka para do go se kere, soko paro, hasika, mbo se kere, mko soto, beta pokoto, mpatolo babiga, soko topako, mke sepa, sopra toko so. Esa nada ba reka bodozo reka sopa soko tala para dega sopa do si kerebo rekosa osaka sopa rada sora kose erika so para rogo ma sopa zombo rokoto si kerebo rekose reba rokose para rabo rekose kereba rokose kete soko rara para dega so rekose kete leba rekese le para dego rokose para dego sa. Masoka para dega, rakatapa, sakata la parada, soko rababa, sora bagore, soko telepa. Oh, with long life, he will satisfy you. He kambandosa, rekapatele, masoko reba, robo zigana, esoko pata, mko teleba, zoreba. You will satisfy me. Mango telepa, rekabaledo, rekoshabale. Oh, with long life, with your presence, God, with your wisdom, God. With your glory, God, Marco Baradego, Beshere Kese, Ereko Rakotele, Bradogo Zika, Roko Pakota, Rekalabago Dege, Rosi Mado. Every day you load me with benefits. Makotako, Zirekete, Makola Kota. The Bible says he loaded us with benefits daily. Rosa Mago Sepa. Thanks be to God, which teaches us to profit. Rekaso pando lako, rekese re paralega, rogo si abato. You profit in the name of Jesus. 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 Where you are, there cannot be loss. Where you are, failure cannot be. Where you are, death cannot be. Where you are, regression cannot be. Rango tapokota. Where you are, struggle cannot be. Where you are, strife cannot be. Esaro rakota, soko maradega, exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we are there to ask or think. It is working in the inside of me. Mako maradega so, I have the life of God. Reso pakosa, reko sapaleda ha, osi kamalo da ha. Greater is He which is in me than He which is in the world. E rago zeba, I'm more than a conqueror, not a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. Through Christ, which strengthens me, he komara legosa, rekose ke telepa, rekose barale. The strength of the Lord is my heart. Rekosa lakota, mato bani gazo, erika shoka tolapa, rogo se ke telepa. So rekose ke te, mando se baro, e a roko sakata, e se ke re 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 bo, rakose ke telebo, sando ko se ke re pororo. Zakara raba kosa, rekese lekete, ezika mara telego, rekose mara negoza, rokosi badi gozobo. Greater days are ahead of me. Rekosi makosa, the worst has already happened. Rekose borodo, rekosi kata. Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph and makes manifest the savour of His knowledge by us in every place. You always cause us to triumph. You cause us into victory. You cause us, Lord. You cause us into glory. 
you cause us into progress you cause us into advantage you cause us into promotion we abide in the shadow we're in your shadow God we're in your shadow God we're in your shadow God we can fear no evil in the name of Jesus the secret place is where we belong we shall say to you oh God that you are wonderful your refuge and our fortress in you we trust we don't trust in horses and chariots in you we trust oh God you surely deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence you cover us with your feathers and under your wings we trust oh God your truth is our shield and it is our buckler oh we are not afraid of the terror that flies by night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness all the destruction that wasted at noonday a thousand can fall at your side and another side at another and on one side another ten thousand but we shall by no means be afraid for only with our eyes we reward the we see the reward of the wicked we are far spectators only in the place where we cannot be touched we have set our love on you therefore you'll deliver us from all trouble you are our habitation he says no evil shall come near you no plague shall befall you he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in all your ways in all your ways the bible says they shall bear you up with his hands so that you'll not dash your foot upon the stone you shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. They shall tra you shall trample under your feet. Oh, hallelujah. He will deliver you. He will set you on high because you've known his name. Mango Sika Parade. When you call upon him, he will answer. He will be with you in trouble. He will deliver you and honor you. Recomando Ziga. So Paranogo Sika. O Paroliga So. And with long life, he says, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. That is your heritage. That is your testimony. That is your story. That is your portion. That is your lot. Give him a mighty hand clap of praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. No, 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 no. Clap for Jesus. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Clap for Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You may take your seats. Thank you, choir. Those people who are standing in the back, kindly take your chairs very quickly. I'm going to ask the ushers to give every man. If there is a chair, make sure you're seated, okay? And obey my instruction, or else I'll send fire. Uh -huh, how was your week? How many of you, meanwhile, I am seeing unexpected things every day. I don't know, I don't know whether I have somebody who, who is going through those zones. You get funny calls giving you money you didn't ask for. You get funny calls promoting you. Even those who didn't want to hire you this time, they're starting to, I, I don't know why, they're looking. How many people here have two job offers at Tagopo? They just wave like this. You see, something is happening. Something is happening. So if you're just seeing people waving hands, go back and listen to the sermon called Expecting the Unexpected. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Two quick announcements. Number one, like I told us, uh, this is the second last Thursday uh, and Sunday. The next week, we will have Thursday service here, which is going to be our last Thursday service of the year. And then we will have our last Sunday 
which is the 18th, which will be the last Sunday of that year. The next week, there is a choir preparing Christmas carols, so we got to give them some time. You understand what I'm saying? And then some of you have got to fly to your villages. Some of you are taking flights to Kidgum. Uh, a few of you are taking flights to <laughs> Nakapiripirit. And then you go have some, some Christmas with your families. But also, most importantly, I want to give the team some time to rest because they've worked hard. Come on, let's clap for the setup team. <laughs> let's clap for the ushers. Let's clap for the security. Let's clap for marketing department. Come on, let's thank them. Uh -huh. Who else have I left out? Choir. Let's clap for the choir. Thank you for such a wonderful year. It's been hectic for you guys and we understand. Manifest leaders and the manifest that are streaming. Right now, we have 525 streaming centers in the country. Come on! 525 streaming centers in the country. Isn't the Lord good? So we, we celebrate those wonderful leaders. We clap for the COO, Mr. Chris Cherere. That man, he has, he's behind everything. Nobody gets to the Father except through, through him. And of course, my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Our beloved pastors. Yes. So I had to thank you guys uh, in case uh, if I was to forget the next uh, week. So this Sunday we're going to be in service. Next Thursday we're going to be in service. And the other Sunday, 18th, we're going to be in what? <clears throat> service. And then we'll prepare for 31st. 31st, I have asked only for 10 people. Only 10. I'm not asking for money. I'm asking for only 10 lives. And you'll see what God will do in your life. Praise the Lord Jesus. So Little Crusade is on. I hope you know that. Uh, high school co conference is on. 14th. Send your children. There's a lot of demons in high school. We need to deal with some things. Where, where, where will we be? Here, wonderful. So don't worry. You just bring them here. Security will be here. If they get slain, we'll make sure every child is driven back home. Who can't see? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Rwanda, we are coming. First week of February. Praise the Lord. 27th, I'll be in Ghana. Um... 6th and 7th January, I'll be in Nigeria. So, <clears throat> I need to tell you that early in case uh, some of you want to fly with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're excited. Allow me to bless your offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the richest people in the world and the most generous people in the world. Supply all their needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, Amen. The sermon I'm going to preach today is to some extent connected to what I preached last Thursday. So if you missed last Thursday, I would recommend you go back and watch it because this is also a bit connected to that. But uh, we're going next level. And it's deliberate because the Lord has impressed on my heart in this season to share some very pertinent aspects of the Christian life. And our reading today, as rare as can be, I'm going to open from the message version, Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1. Colossians chapter 3, verses 
one. If it is on the screens, on the count of three, I want all of you to read with me. One, two, three, let's go. So, if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like him. Pursue the things over which Christ resides. Now, you read like a student in, 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 in class. Now, you're going to read like a preacher. One, two, three, let's go. Hallelujah. He says, if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Now, this, in why I choose to share from the message version, because it's going to really emphasize so much of what I felt convicted in vision and instruction to share. Because many a times I have been compelled by God to examine myself personally in my walk of salvation. In fact, provoked by God in my walk of salvation. And I've examined myself continuously in this aspect as of whether I'm really serious about living this new life with Christ. And the seriousness that warrants me to act like it and to pursue the things over which Christ presides. Many times, God has provoked me by how sometimes in our continuous, you know, study, prayer, relationship, we become so familiar with the things of God and sometimes even incline into indifference in our familiarity that we start to miss the core convictions of walking the life of faith that he has designed for all of us to live. And in there, we start to become unserious. We become complacent. We become so relaxed and lazy in the things of the spirit. We settle for only that which is convenient and applicable in our own understanding. And many a time, there are consequences. Because when you look at people who worship the devil, Satanists, devil worshippers, you will find that some of those people will provoke you by how they not only believe yield, serve, and are willing to die for the devil, for Satan, than we are for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It confronts my spirit every day when I look at the quality of Christianity that we're raising in this generation versus how much devil worshipping, occultism, sorcery, secret societies, secret societies that are built, which now are even coming out of secret and exposing their crafts so openly. The devil back in the day used to hide. But now he has come on surface. Yoga. Kundalini power. The third eye. The serpent power. Th these things now are like 
They are told generally. They are not hidden anymore. Nyege, nyege. <laughs> and all these things that we see in the world. Back in the day, Satan used to hide a bit. But now, he has come up. And his believers or followers have become more aggressive now than they have ever been in human history. They are more bold than they have ever been. They are believing more than they have ever been. They are committed more than they've ever been. They are yielded more than they've ever been. And sometimes I look at <laughs> the nature of Christians who can't pray anymore. You know, they're lazy. If they feel like going to church, they go to church. If they don't feel like going to church, they don't go to church. They feel like they want to give, they give. They feel like they don't want to give, they don't give. They feel like evangelizing, they evangelize. They feel like they don't want to evangelize, they don't evangelize. And when they fall sick, you know, they can accept the disease. They can take it in or not take it in. Even when they are fighting, devil, I rebuke you, leave me alone in Jesus' name. You know, like the, the, the laziness that is coming in the church, sometimes I tend to think, what are we missing? What are we missing? And then we claim to believe in a God and carry a faith that we are not willing, able, or bold enough to act it out. You find a sick man, you can't lay hands on them. But you believe that Jesus, what? Heals. You're sick, but you cannot believe God for healing. But you believe that Jesus heals. You passively accept the truth. You, yeah, yeah, you know how to shout and write notes. <laughs> and that's okay. But it's more than that. I believe that in the days that we're entering, God needs more tenacity, commitment, and resilience in our spirits more than he has ever required of the church before. I was reading a story uh, in 2 Kings chapter 3. And I, and I want to share something so deep in there. So you'll allow me to indulge you in a very long conversation of story. But as I read it, you'll understand. After the king Ahab, the son Joram began to rule over Israel in Samaria. In that same time, Jehoshaphat was ruling in Judah. And the Bible tells us that the Israelites had power over a very famous king called Mesha. He was the king of Moab. And being a shipmaster, Every year he used to give to the king a hundred thousand rams and the wool of a hundred thousand lambs. Yeah, a hundred thousand lambs and the wool uh, of a hundred thousand rams. Sorry. So that's what he used to give to Ahab. So when Ahab dies, the son Joram takes over. In some versions, even call him Joram. And then this Moabite king who was sort of a colony, if I may call it, of Israel, rebels, the Bible says, against the king of Israel, Jehoram. So I'm calling him Jehoram. So the king, the Bible says in the sixth verse, went to Samaria at the same time and numbered all Israel and then he went to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and told him that the king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to attack Moab? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people are as your people, and my horses are your horses. So Jehoshaphat 
of Judah agrees to go with Jehoram of Israel to, you know, join hands to fight the rebelling spirit because Judah and Israel were one by blood. And he said, the eighth verse, which way shall we go? And he answered, they went through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and then they also called unto the king of Edom. And they also asked him and said, join us also because we are one people. So the king of Judah, king of Edom, joined their hands and forces to help the king of Israel, Jehoram, to fight the Moabites. But as they go, Jehoshaphat, being a very spiritual man, he tells them, let us inquire of the Lord through the prophet Elisha. I'm going to be skipping some verses because of time. Let us inquire of the Lord through the prophet Elisha. Does God want us to go or he doesn't want us to attack these fellows? So they go, in fact, in the 12th verse, when they're, when they're in, in the 13th verse, Elisha says unto the king of Israel, what have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of, my, of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, No, the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them in the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not have looked towards you. So Elisha allows to hear God for these three kings on behalf of Jehoshaphat. Sorry, yes, on behalf of Jehoshaphat. So they bring him the minstrel and the Lord starts to speak. And in the 18th verse, the prophet says, and this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver thee, the Moabites, also into your hand. So in prayer, God confirms to Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, and the king of Israel, Jehoram, that God is going to deliver the Moabites into your hands. So they go with the blessing of God. If you have time, you'll go read. I'm going to skip a few places. Long and short, <laughs> these three kings badly defeat the Moabites. When they defeat the Moabites, badly, eventually the king of Moab in his head says let me so there were Moabites retreat when they retreat the king of Moab says maybe I need to attack these guys from a weaker kingdom which is Edom so he comes back again builds 700 men of the best that he had and then he told them let's first go and hit the weak part maybe through that again we might try to defeat them. They tried and they failed to defeat these three kings. And when they failed to defeat these three kings, these ones continued doing what they are supposed to be doing to destroy everybody and everything in Moab as far as they can go. Verses 26. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, when he saw that the battle was too much for him, the Bible says he, he took with him 700 men that drew uh, swords to break through even the king of Edom, but they could not. 27, then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offerings upon the wall. And there was a great indignation against Israel and they departed from him and returned to their land. When he realized he could not defeat the Israelites, whom God had prophesied to, that victory is theirs, he went and got his first son, who was supposed to come in as king after his stead, and sacrificed him to his God. If you study the Bible, the God of this fellow was called Chemosh. He sacrificed him to Chemosh. And after sacrificing him, something spiritual happened. An indignation was hit against Israel and they departed from him and returned to their own land. This is what is believed could have happened. 
when the sacrifice took place now in the physical and the Edomite king and Jehoshaphat of Judah had that this guy we are attacking has killed the son who should fall who should come in line after he's gone they were offended I believe they they were they were stumbled I believe and then they told the king of Israel we're not going to fight this thing anymore and when they pull out their forces Israel realizes he's alone Jehoram and then he says you know what we can't fight alone as Israel and they also what retreated now that's how I can explain it in the physical but if I take you to the spiritual there's a group of people with faith in God the prophet has spoken that victory is theirs are you hearing me and they are attacking this Moabite king destroying him by the hand and power of God because they carry his blessing and a man with deeper faith in his God appears and gets his first bone and slays him before them and something in the spirit realm came happened and that war ended even the people God had given victory retreated back because a man with a bigger sacrifice had appeared God respected it even though he had given Israel victory when he saw the sacrifice of this man sacrificing his own seed he said with this kind of thing even I cannot go against I'm trying to tell you how made up some people are when they believe they are gods more than we are when we believe our God. If Israel had chosen to continue fighting, he would still have won the battle without Judah or Edomite, the Edomites. But something in the spirit happened and a man with a greater sacrifice won that battle that day, even against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not that our God was weaker than the God of Chemosh, but he looked into the spirit and, of this man and how much he was willing to sacrifice for the victory of his people. And these men could not. And God honored it. Israel turned back home. And that battle was over. Because I repeat, some people in the dark world can sacrifice more than you are willing to sacrifice in faith for your God. You think it's new? These things you hear, child sacrifice, they sacrifice the child. People have sacrificed their own children for this thing called wealth for this thing called power do you understand what i'm saying and you're still dealing with a christian who can't even tithe and then you ask yourself but me what's wrong with me what am i missing you that's exactly what you're missing so let me open your eyes to something who here is familiar with something called teraphim Let me explain what teraphim are. If I can take you back to the story of uh, Genesis 31. For those of you who remember that story. Laban, Jacob, you remember? The scriptures tell us, all through as you continue reading, Jacob at the right time wants to escape from Laban's house and carry his, wife, his, his wives, Rachel and Leah, to take them wherever he's supposed to take them because he was tired of serving who? Laban. But the scriptures tell us that Rachel, one of his daughters, as they were 
running away from Laban, she stole her father's gods. Those gods are called teraphim. Are you following me? When she stole her father's gods, they ran. And so Laban starts chasing after Jacob to find him because they had gone with his what? With his gods. I'm not going to go into the story because I don't, I'm not looking for so much there. And you remember, uh, he finds Jacob and Rachel had sat on them and she says, oh, my father, I can't stand up. I'm in the ways of women, you know, in that time and, you know, somehow. When you study ancient rabbinical literature, let me explain what teraphims were. Back in the day, people used to worship different gods and they believed that for you to preserve a household to the next generation with power, with wealth, with influence, with glory, you needed to sacrifice your first son. So, Houses used to do that. And there was a place, every man which had money to build a house, there was a place for the teraphim. What was the teraphim? You had to get your first son, sacrifice him like you're sacrificing any other animal. After killing him and sacrificing them to your God, small God, not big God, then eventually they will get the bones of that son and put them in a corner and that became a god. That's what they call teraphim. That means Laban had sacrificed his first son. Now, when you read ancient biblical texts, extra biblical texts, and I've read many of them, you realize that this teraphim, they used to even go to them to inquire of them. Of their future, of their destinies, of their businesses. They used to go before this teraphim to ask them questions, to get answers from them. So it was a common thing for men to sacrifice their first male sons. Remember, when it comes to us in the Bible, the first belongs to the Lord. Firstborn, do you understand what I'm saying? The firstling is of the Lord. Like, like Hannah commits her son, you know, Samuel to God and says, this is my first to you. It is Jewish culture, Eastern culture. Usually the first is given to God for service. In fact, when they win them off, they usually take them to the temple to serve. Then the rest can serve other things, but the first is to serve God. Okay? Now, they copy the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For them, they sacrifice them. For us, we give them to the Lord. You understand? We commit them to the Lord. We put a Nazarite vow on them to serve God. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't believe in killing your firstborns. Are you following? For them, they sacrifice that firstborn. Those of you who have been in Africa, it's not a mystery. Of course, you are watching me from probably the US or Europe. You don't understand these things, maybe. But here in Africa, we know it. And we know people who have sacrificed some of their children. Either they've sacrificed the firstborns of some other person, or they sacrificed their own first child, first child, or they put some stuff on that child, and the child is like a cabbage. You understand? Eh? But, 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 no, 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 don't laugh. It's serious. But really, they are following a very ancient craft. That was terrifying. That was terrifying. <laughs> you look at your child in the eyes and imagine how somebody can get, you played with them. They went, you know, you, you went to school with them. They made you laugh on dinner tables. They did this and made fun. And then a man puts a, a sword in that child. Bah! To redeem the destiny of his house. That's how much they have given. And you find such a guy and play with him. <laughs> if even in the spirit, if you go back to the first story I told you, Israel would not go any further. Because a man sacrificed bigger. You find such a guy and you think that you're going to be on level field. Because you know how to sing hill song songs. You're joking. This sacrifice is first in two days. Go read First Samuel 19. 
You remember the time when Saul was chasing David and wanted to kill him? Michael hides David, puts him through a basket, through a window, and then he escapes. The scriptures tell us, Michael gets a teraphim. And when she took that teraphim, she covers it in the bed. When she covers in the bed, these guys come in and think David is what? Sleeping. So how would they assume that it's a human being in there except the teraphim was in form of a man? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of them used to keep skulls only. They put them in a corner, mostly. Or some would keep body parts, but mostly, most of them used to use skulls. They get that skull and put it there. That's a teraphim. It's not just a, a molden image out of, out of soil or clay. Are you following what I'm saying? Men fight in the physical, the Bible tells us, and fight for a long time until they cannot get victory. And the Bible says they take this, this, this war from the physical realm. As the war continues in the physical realm, these guys go in the heavenly realm and start fighting there while the physical is still taking place. The Bible says in Judges 5.20, they fought from heaven and the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. And when the victory was done in the heavens, down here, a woman just slays a man with a sword and he dies. So what you see physically happening had a spiritual connotation. There was a spiritual war taking place as a physical war was taking place. So men of war, people of war, you realize that even though there's this physical fight, they don't fight only with that. They fight with something else. One time I'm watching this story of Muhammad Ali when he fought George Foreman. How many of you watched it? Ha. If you watch that story, it is said that a shaking woman touched Joe Foreman. How many of you remember that in that story? That a shaking woman Catch Joe Foreman. They, they, they brought witchcraft <laughs> and, and, and touched him. They say it's in, the, it's in the movie if you watch. So I said to think. And so they say that because of that, they believed that he, his hands were not going to be stable while he was fighting who? Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali won that battle. When Muhammad Ali won that battle, a short while, Muhammad Ali started shaking until the day he died. Correlation? The spiritual, you understand. There's a fellow who beat Muhammad Ali and Tyson cried and told Muhammad Ali, when I grow up, I'll beat that fellow. I don't know that some of you can do your research. And they put this man on interview. I'm not telling you what I heard. I saw the man on interview. And that when, when Tyson grew up. Interestingly, Tyson became heavyweight. And he was to challenge that fellow. If somebody can remind me his name. Was he Fraser or something? And I saw the guy on television live. And they asked him, is Tyson going to beat you? He said, I watched him. He said, Tyson cannot beat me. But if he beats me, he'll destroy his life. Tyson went ahead and defeated that man. Shortly, scandal, prison. That was the end of his career. But normal people are just watching a boxing match. Spiritual men are seeing the war. Some of you are just seeing battles. Many things are spiritual more than you think. And because they are televised, you think they are carnal. Some people have sacrificed way more 
in the fallen world and we are sacrificing in the kingdom of God. Am I saying go kill your kid? No, some random guy can take it. Am I saying go cut a goat and sacrifice it? No. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. In the New Testament, after that sacrifice, there is no other sacrifice. But, he has required one thing of you that he quits the sacrifice of the man in the world. One thing only. John chapter 6, they come to him. Verses 28. And they say, what shall we do that we might walk the works of God? This, he says, is the work of God. I'm not asking you for many of these. I'm asking you for only one thing only, he said. That you believe on him whom he has sent. God has not taken away the principle of sacrifice. But in the New Testament, what the man sacrificed in the Old Testament is your sacrifice of faith in the New Testament. Everything you say you believe, believe it. Because the people of the world, I say, they're not playing. They have believed everything. Everything. That Satan has told them if they chose to worship him. They do everything that is required of them. Everything because of their faith. Let me tell you a story that happened in my personal life on my watch. 2004, I believe. 2004, I think. Yeah, about that time. No, about 2005 actually. I think 2004 into 2005. For many years, a couple of years before, not many, I could say a couple of years, about three years before. Um, we used to attend a fellowship where my spiritual mother led. She's still my spiritual mother. I've not lost her. I've kept her. So some of you think I'm submitted. You should understand. Who ask whether I'm submitted. I even have a spiritual mother. So, still have her. This wonderful woman introduced us to God. We used to pray together, fasted together, had many days. So a young lady who was related to her comes from a country called Austria and she comes to visit her. And when she comes to visit her, they used to live in the same house. We used to come and pray. Come and pray. Come and pray. It was a prayer meeting every week. And then one of those days, of course, we get in this relationship, friendship, relationship with this lady. And I start to realize there was something wrong with her mind. She seemed as though she had bipolar. She, she was not okay. She was mentally not okay. You talk with her and see she wasn't fine. So one of those days, one of the people we used to pray with had a wedding. And so we went to that wedding, spiritual mom and the whole fellowship where we used to pray. Because, I mean, that marriage was a big thing. Everybody got married, we danced. I think almost everybody in that fellowship got married. So we reach this uh, wedding and I'm sitting on the table and the Lord gives me an open vision. And I see this woman's womb cut out. So I turned to my spiritual mother and I said, Mom, does that woman have a womb? Then she said, no. Did she tell you? I said, no. We'll talk about it. So we go back the next week to pray after that wedding. But she had intimated to her that this young man saw that you don't have a womb. So I start to ask her. We start to ask 
What happened? Because the Lord told me there was something in the loss of that womb that was deeply spiritual. So I start, you know, asking, what happened? How did you lose that womb? And stuff like that. And as she starts speaking, we start to see a very deeply demonic work. So I tell this woman, my mother, I said, let's pray for this woman. We start praying. And when we start praying, demons start manifesting on this young lady. And we prayed for her for a while. They departed. I went back home. Some day later, they call me in the morning about 6 a.m. She's roaring like a lion. We go back to pray for this lady. And as amazing God can be, I am carried by the Spirit. I'm an, and I'm in her house in Austria. So I'm standing in a corner by the Spirit. And I see a man, a white man, come in. And he had a, a flower. And in that flower, he used to pour blood in that flower. Blood every day. He used to feed the flower with blood. And then I see him do witchcraft. And then I see him use some materials and give these materials, buy these materials, as though he would give them to his wife, as though he had bought them to him for her. And then all of this is happening before my vision. And while we are praying for her, I start mentioning these things. We prayed, 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 prayed. I took off her ring. The first time I touch her ring like this, the demon says, you cannot take my ring. If you take away this point of contact, how will I connect to her? So I knew. I said, I wage not war with flesh and blood. I took off the ring. Took off earrings. All of these things the guy had bought. And then we prayed her back to sanity. When we prayed her back to sanity, I asked her, I said, and I'm not going to mention her name because there could be a family member here. I said, do you have a plant in your house back in Austria where your husband pours blood? She says, yes. He's been pouring blood there for as long as I can remember. And he's been telling me that it's for animals. Ah. I knew what that blood was for. It wasn't for animals. So I start to ask her, in this time and period where in the hospital, losing your womb, do you remember having visions? Yes, she said, I had visions. A man came to me, introduced himself. He said, I'm Lucifer, that I'm going to be appointed as a regional bride. I was going to be kept for this and I was to be his wife and da-da-da-da-da-da. I'd had miscarriages before and all of them were sacrifices. Da, da, da. Oh, I knew. This fellow flew all the way from Austria to come to Uganda for a sacrifice. This girl was born again. In fact, if, if her story was even at one time in, 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 in fellowship, she had, was short-sighted and somebody prayed for her and, and God healed her eyes. And then he comes on one of those visits, meets this wonderful girl who is born again. He's not born again. She don't give a damn because the boy is white and he has money. So she looked at him as a deliverer of a poor household. He said, here, <laughs> let's go. He took her there. The guy was a devil worshiper. Deeply. So he was looking for Satan, a bride. And every kid that he impregnated her of was a sacrifice. Now some of you think you're watching a movie. No. This happened. This happened. Have witnesses. So I, we prayed and prayed. I prayed, I prayed. And then she started coming to sanity. She became okay every other day. She started to improve. Her mind started to come back. She learned to pray more. During that time, I had to return back to school, university. When I went to university, they took her to some other church. And deeper, they, I don't know whether they were trying to do deeper deliverance. I have my opinion. I'll never say, I've never even told my mom my opinion on that. But she enters that church and dies in that church. Cold. And I'm cold and I'm told she's dead. So we come for her burial. The family calls the husband and says, your wife is dead. He hangs up. We saw, you see, I, I just, there are things we saw when we were praying for her that I don't want to share because some of you might not understand what I'm saying. Do you know switching off a phone, her phone, taking out the line and the phone calls, 
And immediately demons get and strangle her. They even strangled another person in the house when we were watching. <laughs> anyway, so they tell her his wife is dead. He hangs up. He calls back three hours and says, after you told me my wife was dead, I went and walked hell for three hours. I don't see my wife. You need to send me proof that she's dead. He said, I've walked in hell for three hours. I can't find my wife. You have to send me proof that she's dead. That's when we knew she went to heaven. Are you following what I'm saying? But a woman's destiny ended. Christian. Because some of you don't take your salvation serious. Some of you don't take your salvation serious. Jesus sacrificed, I repeat, everything that you could need for the ultimate sacrifice. You don't need to sacrifice more than that. But the principle of sacrifice is now your work of faith. Because faith without works is dead. I'm trying to tell you, some of you, the reason why you are dealing with things that <laughs> you pray they can't leave, they can't change, you, you're still, you're playing. Let me use a simpler language. You're not as crazy as you are, or should be, sorry. One time I, one time there was something that I needed to happen. I was in some sort of trouble. And I got a huge amount of money. I was not trying to bribe God to take away that trouble. No. But I found myself giving so crazy, and I don't remember having done, you know, that as much because the spirit provoked me to express my faith in the finished work of Christ at the cross. And I was willing to do anything to get out of that trouble. Because there are things you'll find yourself doing, however crazy they are, because you're a believer. I was not buying what God had already given by Christ. But I was placing a seed of faith, thanksgiving, that it is done by Christ. You see what I'm saying? That means I believe it. I believe God. And God saved me from that trouble. Whether it's going to take a certain life of prayer to express your faith and act like you believe. Whether it's going to take a certain kind of crazy giving. Whether it's going to take a crazy kind of service. Whether it's going to take a crazy kind of fast. Whether it's going to take a crazy kind of yielding. Whether it's going to take a crazy kind of whatever there is the Lord has impressed on your heart at one particular point, you must act out your faith. That's the sacrifice. Some of you pray like Jesus didn't die. Some of you fast like Jesus didn't die for you. Some of you give like Jesus didn't die for you. Some of you serve like Jesus didn't serve, didn't die for you. Some of you come to church, the way you pray, the way you fellowship, the way you, 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 you don't look like you actually believe that you're living a resurrected life. Again, I repeat, faith without actions is dead. It's dead. Because somewhere in the world, there's a man willing to sacrifice for his God more than you are able to believe yours. And God sees it. Don't play with spiritual things because the devil doesn't joke. He doesn't play. Some of you, you're just, 
You just need to get a little bit crazy and you'll come out of that trouble. But you're too composed. You're too diplomatic. You're too furnished. You're too edited to worship God. Even when you're praying, are you? <laughs> Shake somebody and tell him, take God serious. Somebody shout amen. Take God serious. You are in the presence of God seeking him, fasting and praying. And then some random dude who has no destiny comes and take. As if Jesus did die for you. Somebody provokes you into compromise as if Jesus didn't die for you. You sell your birthright for a muzzle of meat as if Jesus didn't die for you. You accept those little monies under the table like Jesus didn't die for you. One time a man in the bank while I was in the bank, he brought me a very big deal and told me if you do this deal, you'll never work again. But we need to work with you to defraud this bank. I told this man, you called a man, a wrong man. You called the wrong one. He asked me why I told him, man, I'm richer than this bank. <laughs> oh! I told him I have Jesus in my life. The creator of heaven and earth is in my spirit. By the way, why don't you receive him? And I started preaching. Why would I sell Jesus for a few millions? Some of you must understand that the gospel is serious. I said no. 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 Because I'm a believer. Praise the Lord Jesus. Those little small compromises. You, you, you say no. I'm a believer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today you're here. Tomorrow you're there. Today you're there. Come on. Let God be God. If you chose to believe, believe to the end. To the saving of your soul. If you're not believing, don't believe. Somebody asked me, why do I struggle to give tithe? I told them, because you don't believe. Your salary is your God's. Oh, but I have many, many debts and, 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 and expenses. I told them, yes. But if you can exalt your expenses above God's principle, then mammon is your God. And then you open your hands up, lift them and say, Father, I believe in you. What me? <laughs> no. That's not true. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Those guys are willing to do way more. A man enters a house with a, with a machete or a gun and shoots somebody to death because he wants $50,000, $100,000, uh -uh, 1 million shillings. He's willing to kill a man and end their destiny. That's how, that's how much people can sell themselves out. A man is willing to sacrifice his family to the devil for power. You've seen them on television. Somebody sacrifices his wife and kids and everybody else just to stand before a camera because he needs that much power. And the believer can't pray because there is traffic. These guys are undressing themselves at night, doing things. <laughs> For you, you <laughs> Let's get to our feet. I know you're still enjoying. But I feel my point has arrived home. If you are serious 
about living this resurrection life with Christ, start to act like it. Pray like a believer. Give like a believer. Serve like a believer. <laughs> Do everything as crazy as you could because you are a believer. There are no more <laughs> balances when it comes to faith. We have to go extreme. If it is indeed faith, God wants it extreme. Are you following me, child of God? You fight, you believe, you refuse, you stand. You... I know it hasn't worked, but I'm not going to change. I know things are not yet moving, but I'm not going to budge. I know I'm still feeling pain, but I'm going to go to church. Even tomorrow, I'm going to go to church. If, if he should take you out, let him take you out fighting. But this is what I learned. If what you have is faith, he can't take you out. He can't take you out. Will uh, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, he said, I would rather die believing than live doubting. That's how crazy he was. Our generation has changed it. I would rather <laughs> live believing. No, I would uh, no, I would rather believe, right? Live believing. No, I would rather I would rather die. Okay, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. Listen, he says, we're trying to say that I don't believe that a man who believes can actually die. That's what I'm trying to say. So why he says that I would rather die believing than living in doubt we're saying you cannot die believing. So we change it to I would rather live believing than die doubting. Aha, that's it. Because <laughs> faith makes things live. I said faith makes things live. Open your mouth and start to speak to God. I have a God who's merciful and kind. Faithful and gracious I'm the apple of his eyes The thought that fills his heart Every morning, noon and night He loved me when I didn't care and was patient till I came running back into his heart. Look how he turned my life around, made me a shining star, his glory to reveal. I will worship him. I will worship you forever and forever Don't look too far to see how good he is. 
Spirit, let me pray over you right now. Father, we repent where we have esteemed you lightly and taken your word without, its res without the responsibility that we should carry when we chose to believe you. And I believe that we receive forgiveness now. We receive forgiveness now. The Bible says he is able to save to the uttermost they that come to God by him, seeing that he liveth to make intercession. It's the prayers of Jesus that bring us to salvation. It's his intercession that guarantees the forgiveness of our sins. His blood. Those are the guarantee. Not our works, but what he has done. So we receive forgiveness. But I pray for every man and woman at the sound of my voice. That may we start acting like we believe. Like we have faith and trust in you. May we walk in faith. May we be obedient. May the works of faith follow us because we're believers. May we not slack behind in anything. May we not draw back to perdition. May we not give up. May we not give in or cave in. May we not fit in. May we not be comfortable. So today we receive power to be bold. To be bold for the gospel. Give the Lord a man of praise. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing right now and act out your faith. Receive your healing and say, Father, I receive it. And act out your faith. Do something you could not do before. Because healing is here. Healing is here. Healing is here. In Jesus' name. Say amen. Now, one more thing. I don't want any man to move while we do this. Because this is the greatest miracle. Oh, by the way, people have been healed. Put up your hands if you've been healed. Straight. See? So, I told you in Fanero, if I call people to testify, we shall not pray. Wave again and they say, yeah you see i just declare that you heal so anyway before any man moves these grounds off these grounds i want to give an opportunity to anybody who says you know what apostle today i want to receive that jesus as my lord and savior i want to take him in my heart i want to receive him come running hurry come 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 Walk quickly. Don't think twice. Don't think thrice. Come. Don't think four times. Don't, don't ask whether they will see you. Don't fear the camera. The camera didn't die for you. Don't fear those who are watching. None of them shed their blood for you. you. You know, in some churches, they have to tell people all eyes closed and heads bowed. Why are you ashamed to come to the presence of God? Here, we want you to come when we are seeing you. There's nothing to be ashamed about Jesus. Run quickly here. Today is your day. Act on your faith. Come quickly, run. As some of you are clapping, celebrating heaven. Oh, Nare Kele. Quickly, hurry. Hurry. Boss, boss. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Come. Come quickly, hurry. If I had 10,000 times, they still won't be enough. Those of you on live stream, come in front, I'm seeing you. When you heal, you 
he'll come with me. Somebody clap for heaven. Give the Lord Jesus a mighty hand of praise. The Bible says heaven celebrates over one sinner. This is more than one. Do you know what is happening in heaven right now? This is revival. <laughs> Uganda, this is revival. These are the days. These are the days. These are the days. So those of you who are here, you're going to make the most wonderful decision of life. You can regret many things, but this is the one decision you're not going to regret. Somebody has felt convicted. Come running. If you want, you come. This is the best decision you could ever make in your life. Now, Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Today, I believe you and take you in my heart as Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Only you can change me, can transform me, can deliver me can heal me, can take me to heaven. And today my life is yours. Take it. Amen. Put up your hands and I pray for you. Among you are people who are sick, troubled, heart, broken. But tonight, this step of faith you took here delivers you from all manner of bondage and disease. I rebuke witchcraft in the name of Jesus. There's somebody here. Something has been strangling you recently. God is delivering you right now in the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you because you're delivering somebody. Witchcraft, I command you to leave. I release the fire of God to consume every spirit of destruction and death. Get out, you spirit of darkness and bondage. From today, you're free. From today, you're healed. From today, you're transformed. Your life will never be the same again. God progresses you, prospers you. You're going to know him more than you have ever known him before. Give the Lord a of praise. I'm going to give you one advice. When you receive Jesus... The one gift you can kill, give to yourself. It doesn't matter how weak or strong you are. Always be in God's presence. Come to church. Whether you've made a mistake, whether you've messed up, always be present before God. He, he only has the power to, to, to save you and help you. Commit to yourself that I'll always be in your presence. Okay? So I'm going to ask for two minutes of your time. You're going to walk there because I want to take your phone numbers. I want to pray for you. We want to meet you later. We want to help you understand what it means to be born again. Okay? For the rest of you, see you on Sunday. What gift of grace 
Is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more in heaven now to pay. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I I can see all is mine and no This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at finero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finero, make manifest.